You have on some of the Hawaiian islands, early in the last century, people from all over Asia brought over to work the plantations there, the fields, whatever. What you have in these cases is a whole bunch of people thrown together who have languages from every which way who don't understand each other. And what always emerges, what has been extremely well documented, is some sort of fragmentary communication system that is made up of bits and pieces of all the relevant languages which everybody can kind of limp through and begin to be understood with each other. And what that is wound up being called is a pidgin language. Pidgin, very simplistic version that shows virtually nothing in the way of complex grammar and it's basically a vehicle for getting individuals who almost always in these cases are societally pretty uh, under the foot of powers that be to deal with each other, to work with each other, working out this proto-proto communication system with fragments of each language. Okay, that's not surprising. What is totally cool is what happens next over the next one to two generations, which is this pigeon thing, this, this committee glued together amalgamation of fragments of different languages within a generation or two has evolved into a real language, which is then known as a Creole language. Creole languages are languages that are a couple of generations descended from pigeon, and what you see is it winds up being a real language. That's fine. That's you know fine given that two days ago we're hearing that it was possible for kids to come up and invent Nicaraguan sign language within a generation. Okay, so you start with this pigeon thing and within a couple of generations it turns into a real language, fits the rules, grammar, all of that. Here is the thing that is so interesting about this phenomenon which is all of the creoles have the same grammatical structure. What is that about? Creoles from all over the planet that were built upon all sorts of differing hodgepodges of the original languages in the pidgin, creole languages all have a similar grammatical structure. Easy explanation, easy boring one, which is it's very simple grammatical structures and you know this is a language that's just getting off its feet in each case. No, in all these cases it is grammatical structures that are not necessarily the simplest. It's not just some baby step languages, it's languages that all seem to come up with the same grammatical structures there and what this has given rise to is the notion that there is a default grammar built into humans. Let humans go running with a whole bunch of fragments in different languages and, not surprisingly, we're able to turn it into a real communicative system within a generation or two. And when pulling language out of thin air, humans always tend to come up with the same sort of grammatical structures that are not necessarily the simplest. Argument there being there is an innate, there is a hardwired, there is an ancient default pattern of grammar that humans use when they come up with language. So totally interesting. What you find also with the sign languages as they get invented, Nicaraguan sign language, it went through a first generation of being pidgin and soon turned into a signing equivalent of Creole and it has some of the same grammatical structures. Even when humans are defaulting into a new language that's purely gestural, it shows some of these constraints that you see with the Creole languages other features of this that come through. Apparently there's like 24 different ways that you could put together objects and subjects and rejects and participles and whatever it is. Grammatical structures, this guy Joseph Greenberg, linguist, who was here at Stanford until a few years ago when he died, apparently an incredible titan in the field, he did some of this research. There's 24 possible different ways languages can do this object-subject business and all across Earth, all across the 6,000 languages there, you only see 15 of them used. And the vast majority of grammars on Earth only use four of them. So the argument there winds up being this is a pretty non-random skew. Again, we're seeing some kind of prepared learning default grammars, this very imprecise sense of there's something genetic floating around here. 
So that complementary to the whole world, instead of looking at things like FOXP2 and its mutations, the usual two very different approaches. That whole pigeon to Creole transition is really, really interesting, and it really has this feel in the undercurrents of it that there is a basic human grammar that floats around there, a notion that Chomsky has pushed for a long, long time. 